here I'm cutting the wires to fix the transom in place. These need to be approximately 8 inches long and I need a total of 16 of them in order to get the transom in place. Uh, there are uh, quite a few holes, 16 holes in the transom and then 16 holes in the bottom and the side uh, in order to hold this transom in place. Okay, so here's my neighbor come to help me fix the transom on with the wires, uh, the total of 16 wires. And since the transom's an inch and a half thick, it's going to be easier to fit those wires in. My neighbor wants to make sure that the 16th inch hole is through the bottom there. Uh, and I show them here with the wire going through. Um, here's where we make the decision to go put the wires into the transom. First I want to put this tie across the transom to hold the sides again in a little bit because the the sides kind of flare out away from the transom and so this uh, toe strap will bring those two sides in tighter to the transom. This process is a little bit finicky because the holes that you're fitting these through are only one sixteenth of an inch big and the wire is not much smaller so finding where that hole is and getting that wire in takes a little bit of getting done. So here, look, my neighbor's getting the, trying to get the second wire through and get that tied off. Here you notice the bottom of the transom kind of slipped out when trying to get it back in. And then I need to reinforce the sawhorses that the boat is sitting on so that I can climb up inside here and help feed those wires down through those holes. So I'm trying to quickly screw on some 2x4s and some more bracing on those sawhorses so they don't fall down while I'm climbing inside there. So it looks like it's coming pretty good here. Got uh, all the wires tired. I'm uh, tightening them up a little bit. A uh, couple of wires broke when we tightened them, so I'm going to go ahead 
and put a couple of temporary dry roll screws to hold these sides uh, tight against the transom. And here's my dog walking into the garage to check on the progress. All right, here's a speeded up version of mixing all the epoxy and putting in wood flour thickener so you get a peanut butter uh, paste that goes in between each of those wires at all of the joints. And uh, this is a pretty long process. I sped it up here so you wouldn't have to just sit there watching, but You'll see me go through, mix it up, and then start to apply it to all these joints. And it takes a while, um, but it's pretty important to make sure that the boat stays together when we cut all those wires apart and then get the fiberglass tape on after that. It's about 85 degrees in the garage today, and uh, these bags started to get a little bit hot in my hands as I was uh, metering it out through that hole. It's just a little Ziploc bag, and uh, cut the corner of the Ziploc bag and get the uh, thickened epoxy out into the joint. One of these batches that I mixed up was a little bit too thin and I tried to apply it back on the transom and it just sagged down in that gap in the back there. So I had to mix up the last batch a little bit thicker so that it would fit in there and not sag down and get caught in the wires. So here's a close-up on the transom, that big gap that they designed in there to be filled with epoxy. And again, you kind of see where I missed the wires, but got in between the wires. And then tomorrow I'll go and cut all the wires when the epoxy is set. 
And then mix some more epoxy and have three inch fiberglass tape over all of these joints. And that's the process as designed by Chesapeake Lake Craft.